Welcome to the Modernism Assignment Presentation. After the Industrial Revolution, many fine artists transitioned from making art for galleries to making art for the printing press. A newly educated and literate population with disposable income created a need for clever and beautiful advertising in an expanding marketplace. Modernism emerged in the late 1900s and grew in popularity because it catered to a new socially aware consumer society interested in fashion and travel. As you can see in this timeline, modernism spans across three decades, and today we're going to focus on the later part of this movement. In the 1920s, the Art Deco movement emerged from France and continued into the 1930s. It celebrated travel, speed, and luxury with geometric styling and vivid colors. Advertising posters adopted bold silhouettes and simplified forms with dramatic perspective and angles. A strong cubist, Bauhaus, successionist, and distill aesthetic influence can be seen in these designs. Art Deco decorative styles are drawn from geometric shapes like obelisks, pyramids, sun rays, and lightning bolts. The color palette of the time makes neutral hues and bold tones. Art Deco typefaces consisted of geometric sans serif fonts with crossbars raised above or lowered below the X line. Check out these poster examples and please take note of inspirational attributes and characteristics you'd like to include in your piece. I'll point out how the artists effectively use the elements of art and principles of designs in each poster. We'll start with AS AM Cassandra's work. Notice how AM Cassandra uses really interesting ways to frame his destinations in each poster. In this poster, for example, he uses a gorgeous gradient around the edge and I also really appreciate his use of type, how he stacks it so that the type itself becomes a form within each poster. In this poster, I love his use of perspective, how he draws the eye all the way back to that point at the end of the tree line there. And at the end of the tree line, he illuminates everything by making this white sort of uh, gradient orb come from that area. I also really love how he added the detail of the cobblestone along the sidewalk on the right edge there. That's something that could have easily been left out, but he didn't leave it out. And it just adds that extra special little touch there. He's also really good at working with a minimal color palette, which is part of your assignment. This is Tom Purvis's work. This is really quintessential Art Deco because of the flat blocks of color. And this is going to be one of the easiest, um, easiest solutions for you to tackle in Illustrator while creating your poster. Uh, notice how Tom also does a really wonderful job at uh, balancing his color composition. So by adding this blue little um, moat around the, the castle here down within the sand, it helps break up that sand a bit and balance this huge chunk of blue that's up here in the top part of the composition. Also adding this little dog here with the white um, to balance off of this character's bathing suit and then the black spots to balance off of this character's bathing suit is just a really extra special touch. Tom also likes to put his text on the bottom of his composition and the frame itself to kind of ground the whole design. Here's another example of that and his work. This color palette is actually very similar to the color palette that's required for uh, our assignment. So this is a really good example of how that's used. In this piece here, he uses a really dark value in the background to make that background recede into the back. And that's something that a lot of painters will do. And it's just very effective. Dark colors help to recede into the background. I also love how he used um, sort of strange colors for the water uh, and the boat in the foreground. So don't be afraid to use colors that you wouldn't naturally see in that situation. Um, this reflection of the sky and the water is another really wonderful touch too. This uh, example, this is a really great example of using white to emphasize uh, something in your composition as well as to direct the eye through the composition. So our eye is going to be 
pulled to the lightest part of any image. So the lightest part in this piece is her hat here. We also have the, um, the pink in the hills working as lines to drag our eye around and look at all the different details. It also is a nice, another example of how he uses color to balance the composition. He's got a nice block of pink in the foreground and then uses the pink to break up the hills in the background. Here is Frank Newbold's work. He uses some more detail in his character's face, facial features, including highlights right here, and he uses shadows as well. So that's a nice um, option if you have uh, things in your composition that are beyond the landscape, they're extra elements like animals, or if you do decide to add people uh, to your poster, that's something that you can do. This one is also a Frank Newbold. It's a little bit different than the others. It has a uh, a lot more detail. Your piece will not be this detailed. There's just not enough time to knock something out like this uh, for this assignment, but he does use color composition really nicely as well. We've got these um, yellows and pinks over here as well as over here in this tent. There's also a nice um, sense of movement uh, with these, um, these rides over here on the left and these people dancing down here in the foreground. So don't be afraid to um, experiment with movement in your piece. This is another Frank Newbold. This is a little bit more characteristic of his style of work. Uh, once again, we've got white used as a nice emphasis to um, illustrate all those little sheep on the hill there. And I do love this nice strip of green down here on the bottom. That's a color that could have easily been overused throughout this composition, and he saved it just for that little stretch right there. And one more piece of Frank Newbold's. This one I wanted to show because the um, his use of value is really interesting, uh, using a really dark value in the foreground this time to sort of silhouette the trees and the foliage in the foreground is a really neat approach. It tells us that the sun is behind these uh, objects and that's an option that you can use as well. So if the sun's back there, it's gonna illuminate everything in the background this time. I'm not crazy about the placement of the tree. It's a little bit off. It's not exactly centered and it's definitely not using the rule of thirds. So it does make the balance feel a little bit strange here, but it is a wonderful use uh, example of how to use value. This work is by Ludwig Holwein. Now he is an artist that mostly did other types of advertising during this time, uh, mostly for clothes and um, products like cigarettes. So there's only a few travel posters that he did, but his style is so specific and unique that I need to show it to you. He also is uh, uses a lot of texture here. Now this is achieved with paint, but it's something that can happen in Illustrator. We're not going to go over texture necessarily this round, but we will go over it for the next assignment. Um, so if you already know how to use it and you want to, you're welcome to. But notice that he uses huge blocks of color. Now this is another more detailed piece of his. Uh, a lot of his work is not this detailed, but it's just a really beautiful composition. And we've got these huge butterflies in the foreground. So he really plays with scale really nicely. Also the representative shapes of the, of the clouds in the background to break up that sky is a really nice touch. This one right here is his same work. And if you were to put these three pieces side by side, I feel like it might be kind of hard to know that this was the same artist. We do have these um, fluffy round clouds in the background. That's something that is a little bit similar, but other than that, um, I don't know, they're all pretty different. I think what's so interesting about this piece is the huge red tree in the foreground breaking up that what could have been kind of mundane blue and, and brown sky in the background. So giving us this viewpoint through the tree is a really, really cool way of going about this composition. So that's something that you could consider doing as well. Now this is George Gawthorne's piece, another wonderful use of perspective. Art Deco with all of the geometric shapes really lends to using perspective in unique ways. So please, use perspective in your piece. Like there's no reason not to. 
The other thing is the use of color up here in the top is a really nice way to emphasize uh, the train because this is about this poster is about using the train to get from London to Scotland. And so instead of making a giant train in this piece, it's just a little small part about it, but it's the brightest part in this in this uh, image. He also balances it nice, nicely with a few little specks of orange down here to show the people and the lights on the ship. This piece right here is a wonderful use of emphasis as well. So we've got this pink character down here. And because that's a nice contrasting color, she stands out a lot. So we've got these huge blocks of color to represent highlights and shadows and uh, give us break up the composition a bit. But then we've got this figure down here to show scale. And with the color that he used, it shows emphasis. This piece right here is another really beautiful way to, to use value. Um, this one's pretty interesting because by using this yellow uh, on the castle in the background to recede into the sky, it's sort of making it so that it's um, it's juxtaposing an ancient architecture with the new, darker valued um, modern city in the foreground. So that's a really cool way of, of solving that. This one here, where there's gonna be a few examples of very detailed um, compositions. So it's going to be a bit hard for you to do something this detailed within the time frame that we have for this assignment, but it is really lovely. And um, the way that this artist used cool colors in the background and warmer colors in the foreground, plus more detail in the foreground, uh, really helps pull your eye around beautifully. And it's just a really nice use of color. Um, also, it's a really beautiful composition. It's a nice example of the rule of thirds with the figures down here in the bottom left area. So that's a nice uh, example of that. Now this one right here is a really wonderful use of form because we add, he added that lovely highlight to the front of the ship. And also with the reflection in the water, um, it gives a huge sense of scale. So that's something that you could do as well. And then this one is a wonderful use of pattern. So we've got this guy's crazy sweater in the foreground and his fantastic socks. So I'm not going to cover adding um, patterns to Illustrator in this assignment, but if you know how to do it, you're welcome to use it. It's not mandatory by any means. It's an option if you'd like to use it. This one is the last one I'm going to talk about. Um, once again, incredible use of perspective. We've got um, more emphasis with our white up here in the corner and our white in our character down here. So because the artist added white to this megaphone, it pulls our eye from this text here to this character and then down to this character down here. So we've got a lot of gorgeous Art Deco geometric forms. We've got wonderful contrast with the yellow and the black and the white and the black. And it's a really wonderful use of alignment. Uh, these, these, uh, these circles aligned um, next to each other. So that's a, a really nice strategy if you'd like to go about that. So I'm just gonna go through the next slides quietly and you can look at them and you can pick out all these things um, yourself as you see them.
Thank you for watching.